Welcome to your favorite YouTube channel, Cartoonist Kayfabe. I'm Ed Piscor. I'm Sean Japan Book Hunter. And I am Brian Moss. We're going to do a little celebration on uh, the cartoon works of, uh, as we call them in the States, Hideshi Hino. But it's Hino Hideshi in Japan. Uh, some of his works have come to uh, the States. These these smaller works, uh, Red Snake, what's this, is this Panorama? Yep, that's Panorama of Hell. And what are these two? That's Onimbo Bug Boy. Uh, Bug Boy, the yes. Bug Boy series. So yeah. before before your Junji Itos, you had Hideshi Hedesh, Hino, and these books they they uh, sort of came and went in the states. Uh, I think that they're slowly starting to come back into uh, print, but you would see his his work on shirts, and it would be bootlegged to death and kind of like goth goth kind of stores. But Sean, you got hold of this this book that has his ganga and stuff, so I thought that that would be a cool thing to check out. And also he he directed. Uh, he directed a very famous one of the uh, guinea pig series of movies uh, because it was the it was the exact one that was playing at the Charlie Sheen house, the, the Charlie Sheen party, where everybody was blitzed out of their mind watching some, watching some chick get flayed on camera, and were like, "I think I have a snuff film. We better call the FBI," <laughs> which made the guinea pig flicks popular. You say you knew a little something about those? Well, see, what, there was a famous uh, child serial killer in Japan around mm -hmm. the time that guinea pig came out, and he happened he to be an otaku manga collector. And he had those movies. So right. when they raided his house to take everything out, they were on full display on all the news channels. So automatically, those got banned from all rental stores. Oh, they see. took all the guinea pigs off the shelves. I think most of them got destroyed. So even in Japan, finding those old VHSs, very difficult to find. The videos are brought to you by the books that we make. And 2023 was and is a big year. 2024 is going to be just the same. The Hip Hop Family Tree Omnibus is out there. About 75% of this print run has uh, been accounted for. So you guys have about 25% left of our, our stock to go. Scoop up that book if you see it. It's going to make an excellent gift. The X-Men Grand Design Trilogy comes out uh, November 14th. It collects all of my X-Men Grand Design works inside of one nice, handy, uh, soft cover. Scoop that up. There are three volumes of Red Room that are uh, completed. Two of them are out on the stands right now, the Antisocial Network and Trigger Warnings. But coming to you in early 2024 is Red Room Crypto Killers with dozens of pages of extra features and commentary in the back. Street Angel Princess of Poverty is coming to you at the end of November. Uh, it is a companion piece to Street Angel Deadliest Girl Alive. Uh, you get both of these books. You have all of Jimmy's uh, Street Angel comics to date. He's been self-publishing, and here you have True Crime Funnies, the black and white zine, 1986 zine. Go to Jimmy's website. Uh, he might be sold out right at the moment, but uh, you never know. He, he might have fresh stock, depending on when you're watching this video. And uh, Hulk Grand Design is Jimmy's contribution to the Grand Design mythology that we have created for Marvel Comics. Now that we're done paying the bills, let's get back to the video. Clearly, like this is like one of the famous kind of characters mm -hmm. with the, with the big eye. You know, this is a trope of Hideshi Hino's artwork. Body horror through through and through, right? Totally. Uh, what are these ones, man? See, uh, these certainly have not come to the so states. So late seventies, early eighties, he did a series called the Fourth Dimension series, which were science fiction with some body horror. And, I mean, he he has to have body horror right. in there, right? Mm -hmm. But like for. Example, this one is like the town of the fourth dimension. Some kids wake up in the morning, all the parents, all their siblings, everyone's gone. They're, they find each other. A little bit of a Goonies type adventure ensues with some, uh, of course, sci-fi, but with some body horror added in there as well. Now, I'm quite sure that the, the horror stuff is considered shoujo horror, no? Yep, like still it, it was shoujo in, horror. It was yep. in girl magazines. How? Where would these kind of things appear? I think that these just came out because during that time in the late 70s, science fiction was so popular in Japan. Of course. So you got 77, 78, 79 was a big science fiction boom. So when I collect science fiction books or magazines, mm -hmm. always those years. Okay. Yeah, and of course that's like post-Star Wars. Like that, that Star Wars uh, in, 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 affecting uh, the pop culture across the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just the same way The Exorcist did in 74 for horror manga, those did for sci-fi. Nice. Right. Yeah, super sharp. 
So, so these would have been in, in some sort of sci-fi mag or a shonen mag? Or... So his career was so up and down that it's really, uh, to be honest, I, I honestly don't know. I think that he was at this point just doing whatever he could for money because we're at the tail end of the horror boom of the early 70s. We get a lull through the sci-fi and then the, the 80s, like poppy Japan era. Right. And then in the 90s when things fall off after the bubble, then we get horror making a resurgence. Okay. And that's when you get The Ring and Ooh. Grudge and right. all of those famous... 90s horrors movies. Got it. Now, so manga follows. Mm -hmm. Now, Sean, these are these are on your retail shelf. These are on my retail shelf. Most of the sci-fi stuff I need to restock, but they're up on the website. I'll get more in, but I do collect a lot of them. How about this? Uh, you know, enter stage left. Uh, it's like a what? Is it like a caveman? Yeah, so this is a big caveman series. I do not know where he originally published it. Right. It's probably set in like early, early Japan, Jomon era, you know, sticks and spears, Stone Age, Stone right. Age Japan, mm -hmm. uh, maybe some clay pottery around then, and that's about it. And it's a, basically about this tribe. It's kind of towards like the end of, there's some cataclysm coming, almost like the end of the Mayans or something like that. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, you have monkey attacks you have other tribes you have this giant dude there's all kinds of weird characters that pop up but <laughs> very yeah. clear Hideshi Hino style character right there mm, exactly he has an interesting ink style in in this story in particular like a very heavy brush that I don't really uh, see in some of that other material you know what's so funny man you were, we were looking at the parody manga or or no you were sh you, his first appearance his first printed work mm. and it had a son like this and you were like who drew this? I had no idea. Maybe if I would have saw this a little earlier, I would have had some small... I think clue. if we did this video first, you would have caught it. Uh-huh. Yeah, totally. Yeah, this is a revelation to me, man, because I, I thought that he was always steeped in horror, but of course, you know, the ebbs and flows. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of one of those things where it's like just unrevealing and pulling back those layers. They always... All these artists always have something off the beaten path that they experimented with or did that we just don't know about and that's a part of why you come out here and go digging yeah. and you know brian and i you know we're gonna we're gonna separate from 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 the pack we're gonna separate from the gaijin pack and then go off to some comic stores spend a day right now. pull up pull in every book off the shelf and seeing what the heck is, is out there i'm curious about this back matter where the printing changes it's like, like if those were um from a they pulled those from a different manga like, like another published one or something exactly or? like printed from uh from, from the uh printed magazine mm -hmm. yeah i was making note of that and who knows maybe the it got discontinued in the middle maybe and this is know. the complete version yeah that that happens i i think i think that's how the the final piece of uh of domu came out was mm. was uh it was published like with the tanko bond or something because the the mm -hmm. magazine went away um and he kind of disappeared for a half a year or something to, to to finish it up yeah well you have that reveal obviously with uh one piece from last week in the shonen jump you know right yeah. so well and satoshi kon he died before he finished opus right so the first tanko bond didn't have an ending and then when they found his old genga sitting around that weren't finished, they were unfinished, then they added them to the second printing. That's so so cool. it's one of the rare cases where the second edition is actually better than the first edition. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's amazing. So now, this is the... This is the crown jewel right here, man. A Hideshi Hino monograph. That's kind of a little bit of a career uh, retrospective. Is that Garo? That's a Garo magazine. How about Gado that? that he was Garo that he was uh, featured in. This is that one that I saw all the original art from. Man, the, the dude from um, Mandarake has this painting and like all wow. the pages for that story. It's amazing because Zoroku, that story is really what made him famous. Mm. That launched him into his like body horror career. Mm. So that, I'm assuming this is like a timeline. I think that this was produced for an exhibition that he did in the early, I want to say the early 2000s. So it was probably sold as an exhibition catalog. They're, sure. they're pretty hard to find, but I do stumble across them now and then. Um, and it's just a retrospective of all of his works and some of his key Genga that were released and manga. The first time out here, uh, you know that one store in Nakano Broadway that has uh, shirts and stuff? Takoshi. That place had a gang of uh, Hideshi Hino original paintings for uh, manga magazine covers and the printed c cover. Mm -hmm. You know, like they did... Because he had some sort of capsule release of some shirts or something at that period. 
There goes the bros. Yes, yes, yes. Are these... that's, that's Screw Style, which I believe is going to come out next year. Yeah, super famous image. In English, I mean. Yeah, super famous, man. It's about time that we that we get that thing. Uh, wh- is this his library, or these are peers of his? I think that this, these are some of his influences. So, okay. like, uh, comic uh, Boku, uh, comic Baku, sorry, was a short-lived manga magazine full of Gekiga and those avant-garde mangaka artists. Right. <clears throat> and then, of course, they show some of his toys. And yeah, stuff, that was pretty but, cool. But, you know, yeah. like, this everyone's what... here for the Genga. Totally. And they, it's a real cool approach because they keep the editorial notes on certain things. Like we'll see some of the images two times in a row. And the first time you get it with the overlay mm-hmm. with the editorial notes, just like this right here. That's pretty sweet. Yeah. Sean, this one's from your personal collection? Um, this one is for sale. Oh, so excellent, I man. do have this one and it will be up on the website. The King K Fever's getting it first, man. Japanbookhunter.com. Sean, do you notice when you get like an American buyer and they buy like... 30 of the different books or whatever like is there an influx of buyers like specifically for these books yeah because there's a large number of my customers that are just into the he body hit comics lemon comics like shoujo Mm -hmm. horror or they're just into maybe 70s 80s like like sexy kekiga you know so when i get like a big run of like horror like i got recently Mm -hmm. they hit the site and they start scooping up all the good stuff yeah yeah we're just so deprived (laughs) <laughs> yeah. I mean, in, even Hino Hideshi, as, I mean, he's considered, it's him, Inuki Kaneko, and Umez. Yes. They are the kings and queen of Japanese horror, right. and he's only got a handful of stuff translated into English right. uh-huh. out of his catalog. Yeah. Yeah, and it was done under real weird circumstances. Like, it wasn't even a proper publisher. I forget, I forget the name of the publishers. Like, some weird off-brand stuff. Uh, this guy, Charles Schneider, was a part of that. Mm. And I think he was, like, one of the early early gallery representatives for uh, Klaus. Mm. You know, some Bay Area yeah. dude. Uh, just very uh, convoluted little yeah. little subsection of, you know, early 90s comics. Mm-hmm. This stuff is... It's interesting to see these um, photographed pieces because... Uh, it's almost one to one. Like you don't really see, you know. It looks like the final printing of the of the mangas. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The resolution is a little weird. Yeah. On these things, you know, it's not it's not the it's not the most focused mm-hmm. tight thing. But I mean, what what else are you gonna get right. that that has this stuff? That's in, that's an interesting approach, man. See, this is you. You got to tread lightly when you're making comics and you have something like that because. If you're trying to design a page, very often people will like do this kind of thing, and it would just look like a, a tangent. Yeah, exactly. Mm. It's a it would, it, in the worst way. Like this is good design, but it very easily could be bad design. Mm. Try to like they were inspired uh, inspired Zelda. Right. <laughs> <laughs> just incredible. Yeah. You know what it is too uh, the 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 color of because you know the paper is way more whiter than this. Yeah, probably. it mm-hmm. like has a weird green filter to it. Yeah, mm-hmm. there's like a little green in the in the print mixture. Green. Well, yeah, yeah, and that's that's your section with the original art, which is pretty red. Mm-hmm. It's incredible the fil- facility that uh, so many of these mangaka have with color because they use it sort of so infrequently when it comes to their entire kind of page count. Right. You know, it, it might be. You know, twenty pages to a tankobon tops. If if they got, you know, like that premier treatment, mm-hmm. a magazine cover every now and then. Yeah. So it makes you wonder, like, how they develop those, uh, you know, ten thousand hours practice on the color part of it, with the right. watercolor or the markers or what have you. Mm-hmm. Just a great eye for design, and just the conceptual nature or something like that is fascinating. Yeah. Some of the paste ups and editorial notes. Editorial notes. I'm guessing, mm-hmm. because what like you notice that the the wording changes. Keep this, move that, right. kill that. A little bit of page re- renumbering. So there's definitely some stuff cut previously. Yeah, it's all storytelling flow. You know, it's it's leading the eye. It's it's a better turn of phrase. The other thing is, some, a lot of the horror manga, uh, the horror manga cod that we're producing for He Body Hit Comics. They were producing just for Tonkobon. They weren't oh. being serialized in magazines. So Panorama so, from Hell was just its own book? So I'm not sure about Panorama specifically because it's such a popular title. Right. But as with the ebb and flow of, of 
poor popularity, sometimes they were producing just solely for Tonkobon releases. That's so cool. they didn't have those 22 page, 26 page restrictions. Right. So from, from the editing standpoint, editorial standpoint, they can go through and cut whatever they wanted because there was dope. no timeline. Mm -hmm. per yeah. Se. Yeah, that's incredible. So published across the world. He's, he's flexing. Uh, in, in Mexico, in Spanish, they love Hino. They love him. They love him. He got a lot of translations down there. That's cool. Italy as well. And then what do we got here? Like some sort of rare comic? Oh, I see. That's the man? That's the man. <laughs> so he, he's, I, everyone says that, especially when he was younger, because he's an older gentleman now, but you know that he was such a scary man. He was very set in his Budo like kind of samurai ways. Mm -hmm. He practiced the samurai sword. So there's probably a picture in here of him cutting bamboo with the samurai sword. Notorious smoker and drinker. Chain smokes, always has a drink in his hand. And uh, was a hard man. But he also fleed Mongolia during the end of the war as a three-year-old child. Uh, he was in Manchuria. Wow. So his, his, of course, they had factories out there, school teachers, you know, they had actual... So when, at the end of the war, his family became refugees and returned to Japan. Mm -hmm. And I believe in the Kyushu area. But So he grew up in post-war Japan, hard life. Yeah. Right? Right. You know, with n no shoes, hard. Yeah, you know. well, he definitely has some demons to exercise. And he definitely gets to hang out with a lot of ladies. Oh, it's Shoujo Horror, man. Yeah, man. They love him. <laughs> He's they a rock star. Love him. <laughs> <laughs> what a great little monograph, man. Okay, Fabers, if you don't scoop this up, I will. Oh, it's a great... Especially for someone like me, because I have one in my personal collection. For someone like me who likes to know everything about the manga call that I collect, mm -hmm. then it's just a great resource. Right. And if you're a collector, especially this back portion, you can find all the holes in your collection. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Sean, thank you so much, man. Uh, one more time, why don't, why don't you drop the, uh, the website URL, let the people know where they can get these books and how to get them. JapanBookHunter.com. Go on there if you're looking for Hino. Just hit that in the search bar. Hino, Hideshi, Hideshi, whatever you want in there. And uh, Japan Book Hunter on all the social media. Brian, where are people going to be able to get your books? Uh, you can hit me up on Instagram, Strange Things Moss, or my Etsy site, Strange Things Moss, where I sell tons of comics. So come check it out. K favors like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit the bell so that we can let you know what new videos are uh, available. We are a daily YouTube channel with more than 1,500 videos in our filmography, and there's a good chance we talked about some of your favorite comics. I encourage you to hit the magnifying glass on the front page of the K Fabe YouTube channel, search for your favorite titles, and uh, check out those episodes. If, by chance, we did not talk about your favorite comics on the channel yet, you have to let us know. Do, the, do so in the comments. Let us know what those comics are, and we will push those comics a little bit higher on our to-read pile. Jimmy and I are going to be at Big Apple Comic Con uh, come December 16th. It's been years since we've been to the Big Apple, and uh, we look forward to seeing you guys. So, so please come through and bring your comics that we have yet to sign. We have a Patreon, and on the Cartoonist Kayfabe Patreon... Uh, the King Kayfabers get all the videos before anybody else, and uh, w when the internet cooperates, they are hanging out with us in a live stream recording session as we uh, make these episodes, mitigates the Kayfabe effect. Ultimately, the videos are brought to you by the books that we make, and Before You is a pretty good sample of our bibliography, but we'll get into the nitty gritty. Jimmy, let the people know what you got coming out soon. My next release is Street Angel, Princess of Poverty from Image Comics. This will be out in late November in time for the holiday gift for the uh, action comic, superhero comic lover in your life. And Street Angel, Princess of Poverty collects all the Street Angel comics that are not in Street Angel, Deadliest Girl Alive, also available from Image. And uh, get both books. It'll complete your collection. I have been self-publishing lately. True Crime Funnies number one is available on jimrug.com, along with BW and 1986 zine. And if they are sold out there, you can still read them on patreon.com slash jimrug. And my contribution to the grand design history is The Hulk, which is available in limited quantities because it is sold out at the uh, distribution level. So if you haven't added Hulk grand design to your collection yet, you need to pick that up next time you hit the comic shop. Hip Hop Family Tree Omnibus is my big one for 2023, and uh, it is going fast. Man, there's more than uh, probably 75% of this print run is gone, and stores have been re-upping. It was the number one reordered book on, on Comicron, uh, so thank you guys so much. Thanks to the stores for uh, for supporting the book, but if you even have any thought that, you're, that you want this or you want to get it as a gift, 
make sure you scoop it up uh, right away. Uh, it's the best book I've made to date. 500 plus pages, 10 year anniversary, Hip Hop Family Tree, 50th anniversary of the culture, scoop it up. Uh, not the last holiday release I'm gonna have. Uh, coming November 14th is the X-Men Grand Design trade paperback, collecting all of my X-Men Grand Design works. Uh, a couple volumes of the, that is out of print uh, as we speak, so make sure uh, if you are missing out on your uh, X-Men Grand Design, scoop that up, you'll get it all in one. And there is a trilogy of horror comics that I have made under the Red Room umbrella, Anti-Social Network, Trigger Warnings, and coming in January is this trade paperback right here called Crypto Killers, which uh, collects my 2023 season of Red Room comics with a bunch of extras. The books are the most important part of keeping cartoonist kayfabe solvent and uh, functional. But there are some other ways to support the channel. Jimmy, let the people know. You can subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe newsletter at the links below this video. You can also pick up Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts, merchandise, mugs, stickers, and more at our spread shop. That link is also under this video. All good ways to support the channel. Give them those final merchandise, Jimmy, and we'll be on our way. Read more comics.